All right, so I found kind of a sketchy, graffiti, loose, improvisational style that I think works to finish it off. And that's that very last layer I did. And let me just show you the beauty of the paint. Right? It's this kind of mark that I love. It's this kind of thing that I obsess over in other people's work. And that critics rave about, you know, kind of the combination of hard edge and soft edged and scribble and swirl and color choice and use of space. Right? That's what we can play with. So much so that what I love doing with digital paintings is just turning on different assets, you know, at different layers like this. That can be interesting. And then throwing in something that's finished. You know, maybe that's the finished painting right there. So most important to have fun with it. But I'm going to go with the, the more is more approach. <laughs> and just um, try to bring that same level of finish that I like in the hat, in the face, to the other parts, while not um, undoing the things I like about it. So I shall continue. And what I was saying at the end of the last video is I really like thinking about the artist that paint for no reason other than the self-expression of it. And that makes me think of, of graffiti artists, street artists, even if they're trying to kind of make a name for themselves and get a reputation, their artwork has to be done with a lot of energy and enthusiasm from the very beginning. Also going to zoom out to see his metals move, move his reference a little bit. And then on these upper layers, bring some of that energy into it. So I'm going to open up my brush. And then Just like I'm using a spray can, having to react to what I put down. But knowing that I'm not about to get arrested if I'm discovered, and knowing that I can always just lower the opacity on this layer if I don't like what I've done. So there's no reason not to just attack it. Digital art gives you that license. maybe the least helpful aspect of being an artist is once you do something you like, you immediately tighten up and get really protective of it. <laughs> and so the, the last like three hours of a painting, you've done less than the first 20 minutes of your painting, right? Because you're just worried about screwing it up. So that's why I like the commercial art world a fair amount because with clients you just you can't indulge in that right you work on a schedule you have a deadline self-doubt you know isn't helpful so what I recommend is um, be contemplative about your work but do it not while you're working <laughs> Be really energetic in the moment. Have as much fun with it as you can. Don't be so precious with it that you don't take new risks. Be willing to fail. And then be contemplative about what it all means and if you're any good or not while you're not painting or while you're not working. Looking back at what you've done and then trying to understand what you should do next. And that's why they say that art only exists in dialogue, right? It's not just a, an individual exercise for you. And it doesn't really matter 
doesn't only matter what you think of it. It matters how other people see it and what they can get from it. And when I find an artist in a museum or online or in an article or in a book that I just love the work, I don't question it. <laughs> and I don't wait until I've read their reasons for making the work before I decide, oh, okay, that's good work. So realize that the effect your work can have on people is something you can't be too suspicious of. You just want to be generous with your, with your offerings. The paint media that I think the most typical uh, style of digital art painting matches is acrylic paint because it's so much push and pull, going light, going dark, going light, going dark. And acrylic is the, the most common traditional media that does that because it dries quickly and you're just as, you just as often, you know, paint something out as you paint something in. Whereas oil, you're always kind of massaging and blending on top. And with watercolor, you're always darkening, you know, and adding to a stain. And if you need to go back to light, you have to kind of, you're out of luck. <laughs> you need the, the paper of the white to show through. And I guess the problem is with digital art, the same problems with acrylic painting. You pay for that versatility in the paint method with a slight um, disappointment in the final product because acrylic painting looks a little dead, just that plastic polymer. So people will often spray them with an oil varnish or use a gloss medium or something to liven them up. And that's the problem with any digital art is that it's only as good as the print you get of it in the physical world, right? Though everything's equal when shown on a, on a website. So I'm trying to draw his empty sleeve here, kind of pinned to his sash. And yet, just like the hat, when you're adding a new element, you kind of have to start at the beginning and you can't just do refined detail painting. That's why the pressure sensitive brush is so important. You have to kind of fill in a base layer first. And then once you've done that, you might go to a new layer, take your opacity down somewhat, and then start working between the tones. Cutting in and cutting out. Glazing on top. We're doing our critique at noon. So the collectors come, pick up their work, and they'll feel better about paying that huge amount of money. If we can say, oh, I really enjoyed doing this painting because it taught me something. So that's what I'll be asking you guys. <laughs> what, did you what did you learn about your approach to digital painting through doing it?
Now realize that every subject matter you paint will have fun parts and will have kind of lame parts. So enjoy the fun parts, like the little tassels on his shoulders, right? I'd been forgetting them, but they're silly, they're fun. There's no real reason to try to match the photograph, right? I know what golden tassels look like. I was playing Pictionary with my sons last night. And sometimes those drawings are way better than a drawing you would spend half an hour doing. It's because you're not self-conscious about it. The one that tripped us all up was potty. Think how you would draw potty. It's tough. Okay, if you feel like you're tightening up, go ahead and increase your brush size. Or zoom out, see the whole thing. You can't get kind of an overall finish where everything feels considered and intentional if you're not looking at the whole painting at some point as you're finishing. Remember to acknowledge your edges. And no matter how colorful your painting is, you want to squint and make sure the values make sense. The lights and darks make sense. I know one contemporary painter that does these beautiful oil painting kind of representational likenesses and then just goes over the top of them and like just paints really heavy kind of flat war paint and tattoos and stuff. That's fun. I don't think that's going to work for mine, but it doesn't seem authentic. But sometimes you just need something, some approach that's your own. All right, let's see. He's got little medallions on his sleeves. So in finding your finish, you have to spend some time with higher opacities for sharper edges. And you might even have to kind of outline some things. You decide on your own visual language. Nothing wrong with that. We're not trying to beat a camera using only what a camera can see. We can combine cartoons.